Okay. Is there any reason for this puzzle being difficult? I don't think so. King g6. Winning. I mean, I don't even have to think for anything any anymore. I mean, King d6. King g6. King g6. King e7 on only move. G5. D5 on only move. King here. King here. There. 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 Uh, 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 uh. Okay, that was a draw. Okay, so I cannot move my pawn forward. So that means Okay, that makes it a bit tricky. King g6, king e7. g5, d5. King h7, d4, pawn, 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 pawn. We both get queens. That's not good news. So king g6, king e7. Interesting. King f5, king f7. King e4. King g6, king d5, king g5, takes, takes, here, 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 makes a draw. Hmm, I thought this was going to be very easy, but it turns out it's not. King g6 has to be the correct move. Then king e7 is the only way to defend the f6 square. Hmm. Okay, so this is interesting. When the king is on e7, when the king is on e7, oh, this is very cool. When the king is on e7, and so after king g6, king e7, it's white to move. But let's imagine it's black to move. In which case, anywhere the king moves, it's gonna be a check when I get a new queen. So in the in the line I was analyzing, every time there was a new, uh, both of us got a new queen. If I were to get my queen with a check, then he's not getting a queen because it's he has to deal with the check first. So after king g6, king e7, it's a reciprocal zugzwang, I believe it's what it's called. So if if it's whoever is to move there is at a disadvantage. So what I need to make happen is making that position with, uh, with, uh, with black to move. And I'm going to do that by playing king g5. I've actually understood the solution for a minute now, just trying to explain it. Uh, king g5, and if king e7, then king g6 is winning. Uh, so king g5, king f7, and then king f5. King g7, king e6, king, king, king. King captures king take here takes here takes here and I'm in time. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Ah, yeah, and now we go back to the original idea because now we get this idea with black to move. And he pushed his pawn, but that means I'm getting access to the e5 square. So I'm going to go back, right? Let's not mess this puzzle up. Um, if I push my pawn, he makes a draw. Um, so therefore, I have to go back. OK, now his king is where, pretty far away from my pawn. It may be time to start pushing. g5 here, here. No, g5, d4, maybe. g5, d4, here, 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 
Mm -hmm. And I make it in time. I think this is the moment when pushing the pawn is correct because I'm I'm getting it in time. But let's not push it too far. Now it's time to go after this one. And we get the winning pawn ending and 10 points in the bag. That was a good one. I'm pretty happy with that one. Pawn endings. But this is the problem, right? This isn't really tactics. This is end games, pawn end games. And I seem to have that under control. The issue is, you know, whenever there's attacks and stuff like that, I struggle a little bit more. Uh, let's uh, let's do the uh, open the analysis board actually, uh, and try to look at those lines. Oh, it's a study by Richard Retti. He is uh, the one knight f three. Followed by the Fianchetto. That is opening uh, named after him, the Reti opening. And he was he's considered one of the modern thinkers in the chess game. Uh, and with the Fianchettos, which was a uh, strange idea at the time. And now we're doing it every single game. Okay, so King G6, then King E7. And the thing is that no matter what I do, um, I get into a, a weaker position uh, because if we both go and get ourselves some queens then it's not gonna matter because we both get queens but what is what is very cool is that after King e7 if it was black to move then he has to do something bad so to say uh, and also note that if king f5, uh, king f7, this position could have um, could have happened in the in the main line, but in the main line the pawn was here, which makes a crucial difference because then I can just go capture the pawn. Whereas in this case, I will have to do a detour to get the pawn, and then you know we do the counting, we do the counting, and we figure out that black makes it to the c8 square just in time and this is the magical square because if he gets into the corner it's a dead draw so every time black makes it to c8 it's a draw because the only way to prevent the king from getting there is by putting your own king uh, in front of the pawn but that's not going to be very helpful because at some point you're going to be looking at the position and say I would like my king to move away from, you know, hindering the pawn. But not going to happen here because the king just keeps the its counterpart isolated. And uh, this is actually stalemate. One of the most important um, uh, easy endgames uh, to know. Uh, so that's when I discovered the idea that we needed to get this position with black to move and now the idea is that if black goes uh, king e6 or king f8 or king e8 any square where uh, a newly found queen can attack the king that's gonna be problematic so if king e6 then g5 and now we get the same raise, and this time it's check, and then you can prevent black from getting a new queen. Uh, and what we accomplished by this is forcing black to move the pawn up. But that's good news for us, because now we win the pawn race, because we take the pawn more efficiently as we rush over to the queen side. Maiden 3 with the brilliant use of the stalemate emote. Very good paying attention right there. Okay, I I feel better about this.
now. I really thought that was a, uh, a good, good solve. And 10 points, that is pretty rare when you already have 3,100. Um, but it was an endgame. It wasn't, it wasn't really attacking chess. It was an endgame. And we get another endgame. So as long as we get the endgame puzzles, I'm pretty good.